Welcome everyone, Adam the Woo here as a recording of this Thursday, April 14th, 2022. Piping hot caffeinated beverage. A very windy, I know where it gets its name, Chicago, Illinois outskirts. Take a look at this. A rather large radio flyer wagon right here. A red wagon of ginormous proportions. Pretty cool. I have no real rhyme or reason what the game plan is today. I'm just gonna get in my rental car and drive around the greater outskirts of the, the greater Chicago area outskirts. Join me. Shall you? That thing is big. And as the gate closes, they also have this item out. Oh, it is gusty. And just across the way there, kind of an old-timey looking fire station. It's pretty good. You can see the wind blowing not only the U.S. flag but also the Chicago city flag. This is located in Elmwood Park. Woo! Brisk. Cool, crisp, and brisk. There's a frog right there with a fire hose. But you can see even though it is on the outskirts, a suburb, does say still technically city of Chicago engine 125 love these old buildings drove about 20 minutes give or take over to Forest Park to a very interesting stoop stairwell this residential neighborhood the interesting thing about this is there's street parking everywhere however right here there are meters which I was not expecting. And the one and only Zombie Dad is sitting up here on the porch, created in 2017, as, and has become quite a staple of this neighborhood. So if you're going to visit Zombie Dad, feed the meter on this block, From what I was reading online, pictures are accepted from, from the sculpture up top. Isn't this interesting? There are meters here in this neighborhood. Charity S. White created this. Zombie Dad. Zombie Dad is secured with a lock and chain. Do not want him to escape. Now this was modeled after her father. Very difficult kind of filming and then going back down the stairs. And he is still living. Or at least was when the article was written. He's just overlooking the neighborhood. What would be his view? Night and day. Just like this. <laughs> Pretty neat. The neighborhood embraces it. I got to meet him. Things that are out there. This is not like a Halloween decor or anything either. It's a sculpture of a real man up on the porch. He had the appropriate facial covering on too. Made it now over to the downtown stretch in Berwyn, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. The old Olympic Theater. This is almost a Wheel of Fortune moment where you have to guess what is written on the marquee. And the Olympic Theater is for sale. Well, for rent, I should say. The old neon marquee and signage over there as well. And there's something a block away I wanted to point out, but I saw this too, which is pretty fascinating. Something else that's really interesting. So here's the marquee saying Olympic. The next building over 
I can read it from here, says the Majestic Building. The Jim Carrey film, The Majestic, where he ends up rejuvenating an old theater. It's what these always remind me of. The wind is almost blowing me over. Like, like I'm teetering and the wind just kind of shifted my body. It is gusty. All locked up. I do love this though. The lights underneath the bottom of the marquee. Of years and days gone by. Simpler times. Like the city has posted something that this building is no longer structurally sound. However, it is for rent, which is kind of confusing. Ooh, brisk. <laughs> oh, it's not, it's not even that cool. It's not even that cold out. It's just the wind chill factor. That's next level. Yeah, check it out. The Majestic Building. One block down past that is what they state to be the world's largest, that's right, the world's largest laundromat. I'm gonna walk over there. There it is. With drop-off service, 300 machines, the world's largest laundromat. Also states they never close. Yes, they're open. See the globe right there. World history. See the globe right there. Got some neon there in the side of the window too. It says best drop-off service. Open 24 hours. Look at this. Open 24 hours. It never closes. Look at this neon here of the laundry machine. And this says non-stop around the clock. Yep. Non-stop around the clock and a neon. It's kind of hard to see it, but it says world's largest and then laundromat. Nice. And as you can see in my reflection, I have my hand cupped over the microphone because of the wind chill. I have my, my hoodie on. And yes, I'm wearing shorts. I, I probably should have thrown some pants on. Nonetheless, best drop off service. They have free Wi-Fi and 300 machines. Honestly though, it's not too bad unless the wind gets a gust of wind. Right now the wind's not blowing and it's fine. I think it's like 45, 45 degrees. Yep, I just checked. I just checked the weather on my phone. 45 degrees. Not too bad right now, but when that wind gust comes through here, it's a whole different story. Back in my rental car now, noticing the Castle Community Center, which is pretty neat looking. It looks like a castle. Can't tell if they still use it at this time. Oh yeah, it's nice to have a little, a little warmth in the car. Covering some miles today too, just kind of looping around to some certain areas. But oh, this is pretty cool looking. Drove a pretty good ways over to the town of Naperville now. Probably a half hour or so. There's a mural over here on the side of the community concert center. Little gazebo. Ooh. Windy. Here's a look up just a tad bit closer to this mural. The stairwell leads to nothing. Oh, this might be temporary. This mural, I believe is removable. In fact, this might be an outdoor auditorium. The only reason I'm saying that is because take a look here. 
there is a little crack between here where this probably goes up. Here's a little placard that states some of the facts. The Elmer Corner Bandshell, constructed in 1966, municipal building dedicated on June 30th of that year. And the municipal band shows a little bit of the history here. So here's the band shell back to up until 1925. And then there's the band shell a little bit later. This is the evolution of the band shell. There was this one. And this is the current one. So that mural is removable. Who'd have guessed? An incredible looking church building over there. And not to take away from that architecture. But I'm gonna say hello to the laughing Lincoln. I'm in his land. You know, the Illinois slogan. The land of Lincoln. Lincoln is chuckling it up. Right there with a nice smile. A belly full laugh. A knee slapper. A little bit of a knee slapper there, Abe. You being honest, you're laughing it up. Got his hand here. On a document. Why is Lincoln laughing? The laughing Lincoln was placed here on December 2nd of 2018. Abraham Lincoln was 30 years old in 1839. Storytelling and humor defined Lincoln's reputation as he grew from chopping wood, story keeping, to leading a divided nation. Trying to find some info on why he's chuckling it up in such a laughing fashion. However, the paperwork under his hand is the county board deed to 3.8 acres, 3.82 acres to Naperville to quote be used as for a public park. Document under Lincoln's hand represents the legal transfer of the property. <laughs> I sound like more like Santa Claus, but I was trying to impersonate Abraham Lincoln. You don't really see Abe, Abe laughing too much. He usually was pretty serious in all the interpretations of, of himself. <laughs> Abraham laughing here. Got the hand up, the knee slapper. <laughs> I, sound, I sound like jolly old Saint Nick, Abe. That's something to laugh about, my interpretation of you. Not the best. Got the hand slapping the knee. Got the foot down here. Kicking the, the floor, having a good time. Abraham Lincoln there. Honest Abe, that's pretty cool. That put me in a good mood, just seeing this. Okay, moving on. Something else I didn't realize till recently. Also, this is Chicago Ave here in this town, in this suburb. See the sign right there. But the reason, see the wind blowing. A couple, it's a dual reason on why it's called the Windy City. Obviously it's very windy, but some give it that name because of those in authority making promises they couldn't keep and blowing hot air out their mouth. A very windy promises So the Windy City. Pretty interesting, I did not realize that until recently. A bunch of people have been telling me that, so it kind of makes sense. So two, two reasons. Walking along the river walk now, there is a covered bridge walkway of sorts. Water Street is what this is known as. And a decent sized sculpture of Dick Tracy. Look at this. Detective Dick Tracy from the comic books. And of course also the Touchstone film as well. Wow, that's pretty neat. That is big too. This was placed here back in 2010. Tracy was the brainchild of Chester Gould, passed away in 85. 
syndicated by the Chicago Tribune to this day. Roared off of Gould's drawing boards for 46 years to achieve the status of one of the most recognizable icons. Crime making Crime Stoppers a household name. Longtime Naperville resident Dick Locher became illustrator of the Tracy Strip in 83 and eventually became author as well. So that is why this is located here. In the Naperville Township. I love it. So my head goes right up to about the middle of the sculpture's torso. Don't see too many Dick Tracy sculptures like this. Someone behind me walking their dog. The dog is panting. <laughs> and look, another one. This is a couple blocks away from where I just was. It's the cat in the hat strutting its stuff with an umbrella here. A Seussian umbrella. You can always tell a Dr. Seuss style. bow tie there. Got the hand up in the air. And I like how there's all this, this information here. This was placed here back in 2007. Theodore Seuss Geisel. Seuss was his middle name. Interesting. I didn't realize that. It is appropriate that this eight foot tall sculpture of Dr. Seuss first book character be located here at the Nichols Library. Why is it appropriate? Oh, okay, it's appropriate that it's in front of a library because it was a book and it celebrated its 50th anniversary of the first publications. That's when all of these were created and placed in different areas. So that's the correlation. The fact that it's a library and it was in a book. Other than that, I don't believe there's any, any correlation. There's the cat in the hat shadow to this area. I could be wrong now. And yet one more block away is what is affectionately referred to as Darth Naper, Naperville. There is a correlation there. And the reason it has been given this nickname because it's very similar to Darth Vader with that hand outreach like that. No, I am your father. The father of this town. In fact, the Naper Homestead. Is that the Naper Homestead? The Naper Homestead across the street. Joseph Naper and his wife Almeida Naper. No. I am your father. I am here. There was a, oh wow, there were a few houses. Very wealthy. One of which stood right here. I'm looking at this compass. This is the foundation of one of those homes. This is the, this is the old foundation right here. join you no that's not true that's impossible join me and together we can <laughs> join me what if Darth Vader ever said shall you you know off camera what's going on over here what are you doing over here goose or duck it's this bird Okay, that ended well, because sometimes... Okay, let me get too close. 
they have been known to charge. One could really have quite a BBQ. Well, oh, that grill right there. That grill stands taller than the roof line of this restaurant. Looking at the bench that's beside it. You can put a lot of a lot of burgers, steaks on that bad boy. Almost looks like an apple. Looks like an apple. Passing by this place with a mural of a tiger and an elephant, and not just oh, there's a monkey up there, but also some giraffes out front that are not paintings, and a couple elephants there as well. Back to the paintings of zebra. Ooh, a snow pusher. Thankfully, it's not snowing. And with the wind blowing like it is, this thing is shaking around. I don't know if I've ever seen a drive through tobacco stand before. The truck in the in the drive through lane to get maybe a carton or a pack. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen a drive through tobacco stand. Arrived over in Addison now. The softball baseball field. Nike Park is the name of this. And the old C72 tower. Still back here. And antennas behind them. I couldn't find any confirmation that anything was launched from here back in the day. However, you can see it's up on a hill. You can definitely, not really a bird's eye perspective, but a kind of up high perspective from this little berm. They blocked it off where you cannot climb up the ladder anymore. To get to the top, they place this metal and wood around it. So no climbing up to the top of this. There's one of these in LA I hiked up to as well. It was way up on the top of the mountain. This one not as elevated. But it is, it is here down the first base line of this field. Over in foul ball territory. Be a good place to watch, watch the game though, up there. I'm also noticing this building here, the wind has destroyed the roof and there are shingles and nails all scattered through the, the field here. See part of the shingles there. Shingles all down there. Gusty. Would be pretty neat to stand up on there. Can't climb to the top though, it's blocked off. This is a little development called Elk Grove. Now there is, now these are not real animals, but there are live elks about a mile or two back into a little park area that I drove into and could not find any wandering around. Maybe this is not the time of the year for the live elk to be out and about. Or maybe I just didn't find the right spot. But I found these. I was looking forward to maybe seeing some live elk. But the road I went down, kind of like a, a circle driveway way out down a park, was all blocked off. So possibly this is not the time of the year. But there are at least a dozen or more of these fake elk through here from a different angle there. Got the fountains in the water as well. Even on the side of these vehicles there are elks. Look at the buildings, or look the little spherical buildings there in the distance. 
This light is out, by the way. That's why they're here guiding traffic. The power on the light's out. But notice the three spheres there above the horizon. Here comes a garbage truck. over by the airport. This tower up here spinning around. It's hypnotizing. And that's going to do it for today. I will say, whatever the reason the name this was given, this region was called the Windy City, whether it's because it really is gusty and windy weather-wise, which it is, or because People making promises they can't keep spewing out. Those in authority, those in the higher ups. Whatever your interpretation on why it's called the Windy City as the plane goes by, landing at the airport, it is windy. And I'm in a city, we're on the outskirts, so I'm in the Windy City. We'll see you in the next video. Vlog is windy. Vlog. Thanks for watching. It, it's almost knocking me over. Wind gusts. The vlog is over.